Hi and welcome to a video for Calc 2 on power series and intervals of convergence. And so if I looked at this series, for example, of 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed, and I make that an infinite series here, this is actually a power series where my constant or first term is 1 and I'm repeatedly multiplying by x. So I can also look at this as a geometric series as we have in the past. So if I looked at this and said that this series is geometric and that I'm multiplying by a constant ratio every time to get to the next term and that common ratio would be x. And we said in this case that this series will converge because we know from our geometric um, series work that this will converge if the absolute value of that rate is less than 1. Or in other words, if that ratio is between negative 1 and 1. And so we said this right here was what we called interval of convergence. Okay. Now, since we used the geometric series test to get there, we don't have to test these endpoints because we knew that we only converge if that ratio is less than 1. If that ratio is equal to 1, we do not converge. So we never had to test those endpoints. We knew that at negative 1, it actually diverges, and at 1, that ratio would um, that would make that series diverge as well. So in an interval of convergence, we don't want to use those endpoints or include those endpoints that would make my series diverge. So we just have those as parentheses, meaning up until one, um, but not including one, for example. So we've kind of done this before. Um, so this is actually a power series and it's written out here for you as well. Um, and then we could also center our power series somewhere else other than zero because as you can see, there's no horizontal shift here. But I could add on a horizontal shift saying something like x minus a, and so my power series could look like that as well. Now if I shift over um, or change what my ratio is each time, then that will change my interval of convergence. So we'll take a look at how we can find that, especially if it's not geometric, how we can find that. So we'll talk about convergence of power series, just like we kind of did um, up there. And to do that, we're going to use the ratio test. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the interval and radius of convergence by using the ratio test for the given series that I'm going to give you. Since we do not know about the convergence when the ratio test equals 1, so if you remember from your ratio test work, when you evaluated that limit, if you got that that limit equaled 1, it said that the ratio test was inconclusive and you had to use something else. So because of that, we're going to need to test those endpoints to see if the power series does in fact converge there or not. Again, it's because we're going to be using the ratio test and that is inconclusive when it does equal 1. So we're going to have to test those. So here's our example that we will start with. Find the radius of convergence and the interval of convergence for each power series or for each of the following series. Okay, so as I look at this first one here, I'll sort of try to zoom into this first one just so I can see that. Um, I'm going to use the ratio test to see what happens. Where does or does this series converge? Okay, so what I'm going to do is say, again, for the ratio test, we needed that next term idea or that a sub n plus 1. So if you wanted to find that off to the side, sometimes we found that helpful in the past. So there is my n plus 1 term or next term. And so the ratio test is going to say we're going to evaluate the limit as n approaches infinity of, and again it was this absolute value idea, so we had absolute convergence. So I'll take my a sub n plus 1 over my a sub n. And this is just performing 
the ratio test. So, so far this doesn't look any different than anything you've done so far. So I will evaluate the algebraic manipulation perhaps inside of this limit before I actually evaluate this limit. So one thing that we did talk about in the ratio test video was maybe expanding some of this out. So for example, instead of looking at n plus 1 factorial, making it look like something that was in your a sub n so that you can then do some algebraic manipulation or division of 1. So n plus 1 factorial is actually the quantity n plus 1 times n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 all the way down. So that's n plus 1 times n factorial. And then x to the n plus 1 is really x to the n times x to the first. And so that's what I'm going to write out for my a sub n plus 1 or my numerator here. All over n factorial x to the n. All right, and so this is really going to be limit as n approaches infinity of n factorial over n factorial divides to 1, because these are all factors here. x to the n over x to the n is 1. So I have just n plus 1 times x left. Now make sure you're not putting in infinity for every variable that you see. You're physically substituting infinity only for that n. However, any finite amount that we have for x, so maybe x is always going to be 3, maybe x is going to be a 4, maybe x is going to be a negative 1 half, whatever x is, it's going to be some value, some finite value. Well, if I multiply that by some infinite value, right, because you're putting in infinity for n, this limit is infinitely big. Now, since I did the ratio test, the ratio test tells me that if that limit is greater than 1, my series will diverge. Well, I'm asking for us to find an interval of convergence and a radius of convergence. Well, if my series diverges by the ratio test, you might think, well, there's no place where this series will converge. But I want you to think about this. What would you think about the series 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 infinitely long? Well, that series will converge. So let's look at our initial series here, our a sub n, and think what could x be for me to create an infinite sum of zeros? Well, since it's x to the n, if x is 0, 0 to the n, so 0 to the first, 0 to the second, 0 to the third, 0 to the fourth, right? Because n is starting at 0 and heading towards infinity. So n is going to be, you know, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 all along the way. Well, 0 to the 1 is 0, 0 to the 2, 0, 0 to the third is 0, and so forth. So if x is 0, I have an infinite sum of zeros. And that's going to be the only value that is going to allow this series to converge. So my interval of convergence normally would be an interval notation, but it's only one value, in this case just for x equals 0. And a radius of convergence normally tells me that, you know, let's say I converge from negative 1 to 5, for example, the center between negative 1 and 5 would be a 2. So my radius of convergence would have been a 3, because I go 3 in each direction. Well, I only have one value, right? So I'm not moving anywhere. There's no wiggle room either way. There's only one value which will make my series converge, and that is 0. So my radius of convergence is 0. Now let's just say that your interval of convergence only included x equals 2 your radius would still be 0 because there's no wiggle room on either side of 2. You're saying only for that one value do you converge. So let's do another example. So I'll give you a minute if you need to copy this down on your paper.
This one is an alternating series, but that's okay. I'm still just going to use the ratio test to determine my interval and um, radius of convergence. So if I'm doing that again, I like to see my a sub n plus one here. And so if I'm looking at a sub n plus one, I can see that it would be x to the two times the quantity n plus one. I'll do this in two steps here. Two to the two times n plus one times the quantity n plus one factorial squared. All right, so now if I sort of expand this out because I want to see commonalities with that a sub n so that when I put it into the limit for the ratio test, things will, factors will divide out to one. So this will be x to the two n, and this would be two n plus two, and by now we should recognize that as x to the two n times x squared. All over, same thing down here, it would be two to the two n times two squared, right, because that'd be two n plus two in my exponent. And then Inside of this squared, so I can write this if it's easier for you as n plus one factorial times n plus one factorial. That might be easier for you to see this. So n plus one factorial, just look at one of them at a time here, okay? n plus one factorial is really n plus one times n factorial. Well, I have it squared Right? I have n plus one factorial times itself, so I'm gonna do that again. There's another n plus one times n factorial. And that's what I'm gonna use when I go to substitute in my limit. So now I'm gonna perform the ratio test, which says limit as n approaches infinity of absolute value of my a sub n plus one, which I have so neatly written out over here, ready to go, times the reciprocal of our a sub n. So if I reciprocate a sub n, I have two to the two n times n factorial times n factorial, because again, I don't know that I want to see the squared. I just can multiply it by itself, that's fine, all over x to the two n. All right, so now I should be able to do um, some division here because some of these factors will divide to one. So I have x to the two n over x to the two n will divide to one, two to the two n, two to the two n, n factorial, n factorial. So what I'm left with, I believe, is x squared, I'm gonna write two squared as four, and the quantity n plus one, oops, and I have another n plus one because right, it was quantity squared. Don't forget about that one. Okay, so that is a simplified product in there. So now I can go ahead and evaluate this limit. So if I'm substituting infinity in for n, again, think of x as some finite value, okay? And I'm gonna try to figure out what x needs to be in order to make this converge, but for now it's some finite value or a range of, of finite values. And n is going to be infinity. So I have some finite value squared, still finite, over infinity. And so that limit is zero, regardless of what finite value x will be. Well, the ratio test says if this limit is less than one, then you will converge, period. Well, x sort of went away, right? So what that means is you always converge. So I'm gonna write out now interval of convergence and radius of convergence. Okay, and so my interval of convergence, if I always converge, that's negative infinity to infinity. And so what's the radius of that? Well, a lot of people think halfway between negative infinity and infinity is zero. It really could be one or two or three, but okay, we'll call it zero. You can call it whatever you want. Um, so that radius of convergence is infinitely big. All right, so let's take a look at another example.
Okay, so let's look at this infinite series right here. Um, and can you think of, if you looked at this series, can you think of an x value where I could put that in and I could have an infinite sum of zeros? So what would x be in order to have zero plus zero plus zero plus zero, et cetera? Well, if x is three, three minus three would be zero. And so I know there's at least one value right, for which the series will converge, and that's for x equals three. So I can kind of look at this too from the beginning and see if there's one value that will make this series converge or not and what that one value should be. And I need to make sure that in my final interval of convergence that three is included. So we'll revisit that here in a minute. All right, so let's use the ratio test to determine and find this interval and radius of convergence. So again, I wanna look at what is that a sub n plus one or next term, what does that look like? So I have x minus three to the n plus one all over n plus one. And I would probably separate this out even though I think it's just as easy to do once I get my limit here, okay? All right, so now I'm gonna apply the ratio test. So I'm gonna say limit as n approaches infinity of my a sub n plus one, which I'm gonna use that sort of expanded version that I found, divided by a sub n, or multiplying by that reciprocal, which should be pretty good at ratio test by now. And so, I can see x minus three to the n will divide to one. And so what I have left is limit as n approaches infinity of the quantity x minus three times n over n plus one. Well, as n approaches infinity, if, if you didn't have that x minus three there, so if you can kind of cover it up for a second, if you just had limit as n approaches infinity of n over n plus one, that limit would be one. And so I really have one times the absolute value of x minus three or the absolute value of x minus three. And so what we know is that this will converge if the absolute value of x minus three is less than one. That's what the ratio test tells me. If that limit is less than one, this converges. Well, it's absolute value. So I'm gonna say that limit x minus three has to be between one and negative one. All right, so I can add three everywhere. Two is less than x is less than four. So, so far my interval of convergence so far anyway, is from, and I'll put this sort of in a dotted format here because I'm gonna test it, is from two to four. Now, why am I sort of dotting those parentheses? Well, that's because at two and at four is where it would equal one. And so if my limit equals one, right, because put x equals two in there and put x equals four in there, you get absolute value of one or negative one, which is one. And at one for my limit, my ratio test is inconclusive, which means I need to now test the endpoints, okay? So we're gonna test these endpoints to see does it converge there or does it diverge there? So I'm gonna first start with testing x equals two. And you're gonna rewrite your summation from the beginning, so from n equals one to infinity, but only I'm gonna substitute two in for x, so that gives me negative one to the n over n. And just so you can see the comparison, I'll also test the other endpoint of x equals four. And when you write that series out in summation notation, it is from n equals one to infinity, and four minus three would be one to the n, which will be one, because again, it's one to the one, one to the two, one to the three, one to the four, one to the five, all of that is one over n. This happens often, but not all of the time. What you should notice is that sometimes we have the alternating series 
and then here is its matching positive series. And so we talked about this when we talked about alternating series. Um, we also talked about this when we did conditional versus absolute convergence. What we are noticing is that this alternating series should be smaller than that series. So if I know, for example, that the smaller series, if I know what that one does, I might know, in essence, what the other series does without even having to do a test on it. What happens, though, in this case is this series is harmonic, the positive 1 over n, which I know diverges. Well, that's the bigger series. I don't know anything about the smaller one if I know the bigger one diverges, because the smaller one is smaller than that. So anything smaller than infinity could be finite. I don't know. Now again, this is an interval of convergence that I'm trying to write. So if I diverge when x is 4, I do not want to include x equals 4 in my interval of convergence. So that would for sure be a parenthesis. But now I've got to go back and finish that x equals 2. I can certainly use my alternating series test because this is an alternating series. And so I could just say I'm going to first show the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over n, that positive series that is 0. And then the other condition for your alternating series test was that your n plus 1th term should be less than or equal to your nth term. And so I have that 1 over n plus 1 being less than or equal to 1 over n and just show if this is true or not. So if I multiply both sides, I get 0 is less than or equal to 1. So since both parts of that alternating series test turned out true, this converges. And so again, I converge at x equals 2. So when I'm writing this interval of convergence for part of my answer here, I need to say that at x equals 2, I converge. So that part will have the bracket. And then the radius of convergence is 1. And that is because if you think about it, where's the center? So if you look on a number line from 2 to 4, we have a bracket on 2 and a parenthesis on 4. But if you think about where's that virtual center, that would be at x equals 3. Remember that x equals 3 from the beginning was what made that the infinite series of zeros. Okay, so that 3 will be seen kind of later. And so what's the radius of convergence? Well, from that center, right, a radius is from the center to the outside edge. So same idea here. You might need to draw a number line to find it. That's fine. Um, I'm going from 3 to 4, so that's a radius of 1. So I have an interval of convergence and a radius of convergence. The hardest part for these is that when you have that x left over after the ratio test, you have to then test each endpoint. So here's another example. Um, I found that using the ratio test, here was um, my compiled limit, if you will, as n approaches infinity when I was done with the ratio test. So I know that converges if it's between 1 and negative 1, or if the absolute value of it is less than 1, that's when it will converge. But I haven't tested the endpoints yet. Okay, and now that I have my two series written out, you know, where the x equals negative 5 halves, I plugged that into my series and figured out what that green series will look like and then plug in x equals 5 halves, again, just trying to test these endpoints, figure out what that series looks like, I get the green series versus the blue series. And so we now have to do basically series tests on these to determine um, what these series will do. So because I've kind of got a lot going on in the green series, I'm going to take it off to the side here, and I'm going to say let's use the ratio test on that one to determine what it does. You might also want to try alternating series test if that's more comfortable for you.
All right, so this is what it's gonna look like if you just put the n plus one term in as you're doing the limit. So I know I have the ratio of my n plus one, so negative six to the n plus one over five to the n plus one times the square root of n plus one and then times the reciprocal, five to the n over, oops, excuse me, five to the n times square root of n over that quantity negative six to the n. And again, you have absolute value bars which help you with this, so let's see what this limit turns out to be. So just be careful, you can divide from here. This is again, once you get more experience using ratio test, if you divide from here, you should know that when you divide negative six to the n plus one divided by negative six to the n, you're left with one factor of negative six. So I could look at it that way instead of writing it out first. Five to the n plus one will divide with the five to the n and leave a five to the first in my denominator. And then I still have that square root of n and square root of n plus one. Now again, if you sort of cover up that negative six fifths, because that's just some value there, if I was just looking at the limit as n approaches infinity of this piece of it, that would be one. So this limit is the absolute value of negative six fifths or six fifths. And because that is greater than one, I know I diverge here. So that means that at x equals negative five halves, I diverge, so I do not want to include that in my interval of convergence. That will stay a parenthesis. And now let's test the four to the n, that blue one. And so I've got the series from one to infinity of four to the n over five to the n square root of n. And again, you can look at ratio test. That's probably going to be um, one of your kind of go-to tests here and see if, oops, not plural, and see if the ratio test is gonna help us. So I have limit as n approaches infinity of my a sub n plus one, four to the n plus one over five to the n plus one times square root of n plus one times and then I have um, the reciprocal of my a sub n. And I should be able to divide algebraically some of these factors out. And again, the more you do this, the more you're gonna see this four to the n plus one is really four to the n times four to the one. So I can see those four to the n's divide out, which just leaves a four in my numerator so far. <laughs> five to the n plus one and five to the n will divide out. It leaves a factor of five to the first in my denominator. And then I have square root of n over square root of n plus one left. And so this limit is four fifths, which is less than one. And so we actually will converge because again, if we use the ratio test and we get something less than one, we will know that we converge. So in my interval of convergence, I would wanna make the x equals five halves into a bracket. So I have a parenthesis on the negative five halves and a bracket on the positive five halves. All right, so let's do this again from start to finish so you can get a feel for what this looks like. So I'm gonna use the ratio test just as always to help me determine this interval and radius of convergence. And so with that, I'm gonna write down what my n plus one term will look like. And I am also going to expand that out, so to speak. So I have x to the n times x to the first, okay? So then when I'm doing my ratio test, I have limit as n approaches infinity of my a sub n plus one. And again, I use that expanded to kind of help me, times the reciprocal of my a sub n. And I'm gonna do my division here. So x to the n's will divide to one and that's it. So I really am left with the limit. I just like to see it written down here. X times n squared over the quantity n plus one squared. And again, I would encourage you not to look at the x for a minute. <laughs> 
if you had just that orange limit of n squared over n plus 1 quantity squared as n approaches infinity, you would tell me that limit is 1. So because of that, this is now going to be 1 times x. Again, we're still in absolute value bars. And so I know I converge if that absolute value of x is less than 1, or if x is between 1 and negative 1. And I want you to look back, think about this initial series Okay, I recognize that it is alternating, but I can still have an infinite sum of zeros if x is zero. Right? So that's it right at the center of my interval here. And so I start with the idea that it's negative one to one for my interval of convergence. Okay? And then I have to test the endpoints. I don't know what I do at the endpoints, so I have to test them. Again, the ratio test is inconclusive at your endpoints. So at x equals negative 1, let's write out what our series will look like. So it's the series going from 1 to infinity, negative 1 to the n, times 1, excuse me, times negative 1 to the n, because x is negative 1, all over n squared or it's the series from 1 to infinity of 1 to the n, which is 1 over n squared. All right, so I think what test am I going to use on this to determine what this is? Well, this is a p series. p is 2, which is greater than 1. And so I already know what this is. And if you forgot, you should have that list, right, that was given to us, but this does converge. Now I'm going to stop because I converge when x is negative 1. And since this is an interval of convergence that I'm trying to write for my answer here, anywhere where I can include, right, because I am converging at that endpoint, I want to make sure that's the bracket. Okay? And so now I'll test the other endpoint, which is x equals 1. And so I'll write this series out. It was negative 1 to the n. And if x is 1, 1 to the n is just going to be 1. And so I don't really need to write times 1, right? So I can make that a lot shorter here. So I have the alternating exact series that I had up here. Well, if I know that that series converges, I also will know that this series will converge, or you could use the alternating series test, and it will show you that you converge here as well. And when I'm talking about greater than or less than, it really is kind of looking at a form of the comparison um, test. But again, you know that the alternating, this is the exact same series, right, as the one you just showed, except for the fact that this new one is alternating. Okay, so all the terms are going to look exactly the same, except for it's going to be plus, minus, plus, minus, instead of plus, 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 plus. So since they both converge, I have brackets on both, and I would also say that radius of convergence will be a 1 because you're going from, on the number line, negative 1 to 1. So my center would be 0, which we talked about in the beginning. So that radius of convergence is 1. So there are many, many tests that you're going to have to do within just one of these power series, um, because you're going to have to test the endpoints, because ratio test does determine that that's inconclusive on those endpoints. So you have to use something else to determine what that would be if in fact you have an interval of convergence. I hope you found this video on um, really what we're talking about is the interval and radius of convergence of these power series. Just kind of getting started with them. We'll do more work with them as, as the mathematics progresses here. Thanks for watching.